first of all, congratulations to Jazz and all the people that put this together. This is, um, I think, unique in uh, in terms of uh, national uh, postgraduate medical education, and it's uh, uh, a, a wonderful opportunity for those of you who are starting to think about this specialty to, to get a jump start on uh, advancing your thinking about it to try to determine whether or not this is for you and whether or not you'll flourish in this. So welcome to all, <clears throat> all of our medical students uh, who are participating. I know there's over 200 and I know it spans a number of classes, which I think is important and I'll try to direct my remarks appropriately. Thank you for uh, attending. I think it's, um, it's, as, it's as good for neurosurgery as it is for you. I mean, we want informed uh, in decision makers that uh, try to select, that want to select this uh, as a specialty because there's a lot of downsides for making the wrong decision uh, uh, relative to your specialty, especially if it's something uh, highly technical and highly competitive like neurosurgery. And most of all, congratulations. For, um, for the MS4s, um, you have uh, probably established a, a, a relatively prestigious uh, academic career already. Uh, you, you've uh, got the intellectual capacity, or at least you've been able to convince uh, people like your associate dean for student affairs that uh, you're a candidate to be in the neurosurgical match, which is... Uh, 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 a, a fairly a prodigious thing, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. For those of you who are MS1s and MS2s, you've been able at least to convince yourself that you may be a candidate for this, and uh, I hope these sessions today will help uh, galvanize that thinking. Biggest challenge now that face Dr. Giannotta, I think we lost you for a All of you is coming. What happened? Oh, you came back. You came back. Did I come back? I didn't do anything. Keep telling me if I fade out. Um, um, uh, there is a, um, uh, obviously you're, you're familiar with the process, but uh, I'm going to give you some statistics to show that if you are successful in this process, you will be in an extremely, extremely elite group. So what's your competition? Well, uh, with the um, advent of uh, a large group of new medical schools over the last five years, there's now 85,000 medical students in the United States. Obviously, that's not your competition. But uh, those of you who are uh, MS4s now, the current uh, senior medical students are, are your competition. There's 20,000 of them that will be looking for residencies uh, in the upcoming match. Last year's match um, had 40,000 applications and uh, that the bad news is only 37,000 positions. So that means that some people will go unmatched <clears throat> no matter what specialty of medicine you choose. However, that's not your real competition. Your real competition uh, is the neurosurgical match and the uh, uh, candidates for that. So last year, the current uh, match that just completed, uh, there were 112 neurosurgical training programs. And they offered a total of 232 first year residency slots. So that, uh, that underscores my comment about an elite group there probably is no more elite group than those 232 people. Uh, I know one of which will be on uh, today, uh, Nandi Kahara will be uh, uh, talking to you guys today about, about the process. In that match, there were 252 U.S. senior students, which is the sort of the, um, it's, it's, it's the, uh, uh, Most important at uh, the match are people who apply to the match. There are international medical graduates. There are um, uh, uh, osteopathic uh, uh, medical students now who can apply. And last year, there were a total of 397 applications for those 232 slots. And this is what the uh, neurosurgical uh, match looked like last year. 397 sent in ranking lists, and, and of course, as we said, 232 matched. Needless to say, with such a competitive match, there weren't any slots left over. They all filled. And 
um, given the quality of those 112 training programs and coordinators uh, who are either like Kathy Guzman or have learned from Kathy Guzman, all the programs filled. In other words, the programs did their part to make sure that uh, they matched uh, for all of the slots that they had open. Just uh, um, uh, another comment, um, if you look at uh, candidates who uh, matched uh, in uh, neurosurgery last year, the average USMLE step one score was 247. Uh, last year our, you at USC, ours was 261. It underscores still uh, that residency training programs look at that score, and we'll talk a little bit about why in a minute. Um, where did the um, candidates come from last year? Well, 203 of them were U.S. seniors. You would think that maybe all of them would be U.S. seniors, but we have an eclectic collection of, uh, of people that get into the uh, first year residency slots. So there were eight U.S. grads. These are people who graduated from medical school and went on and did something else maybe a year of research, uh, or it's, it's even conceivable that one or two of them may not have matched the year before and therefore um, got back into the match. Eight, three of them were osteopaths, and surprisingly, this is a relatively large number uh, as the match goes for neurosurgery, 18 were international medical graduates, about half of which were uh, U.S. born uh, IMGs. Is neurosurgery competitive? Well, based on those national statistics I showed you, those 232 slots represent 0.7%, not 7%, 0.7% of the, of the applicants for the match last year. And if you look at U.S. seniors that, uh, that applied to the match, only 1.1% of the seniors in medical school last year got one of those 232 slots to be a PGY-1. One of the uh, indices of competitiveness is the number of U.S. seniors. Remember, that's our prime group. That's the group that medicine, pediatrics, radiology, you name it, that's who they want to match. And last year, neurosurgery didn't match 23% of the seniors, uh, graduates that, or seniors that applied. That was number one. We know the um, competitive residencies are neurosurgery, orthopedics, otolaryngology, plastic surgery, and of course the highest, uh, I think everybody knows this, the highest uh, non-surgical medical specialty uh, residency in terms of competition is dermatology. 75% of the uh, applicants last year that were IMGs did not match in uh, neurosurgery. This is some old data. Neurosurgery doesn't publish this very often, but if you look at the characteristics of matched uh, U.S. seniors, so this is a few years ago, versus unmatched seniors, we can look at things like um, U.S. Emily step scores. Uh, needless to say, uh, the matched uh, uh, group had a higher score. Look at uh, research experiences. <clears throat> Not a great deal of difference there. Uh, but in terms of uh, publications, there is a substantial difference. Work experiences, volunteer experiences, whether you're AOA or not, uh, had a, was a major um, uh, definer in terms of uh, match uh, success. Uh, so uh, it is uh, an elite group, and um, I hope all of you get a chance to join it. If you um, become a neurosurgery resident, there are three organizations that will rule your life. The first one is the American Board of Neurological Surgery. Uh, the American Board uh, obviously defines our specialty. Uh, it determines uh, what constitutes competency in terms of neurosurgery and thereby uh, uh, really um, sets up the curriculum for neurosurgical education. Here's how you navigate the board. The American Board uh, has uh, set up the residency uh, program or the guidelines for the residency program First year is PGY one year, you spend six months on neurosurgery and three other months on uh, critical care <clears throat> um, uh, rotations uh, that are, may very well be outside of neurosurgery. Critical care is obviously in, extremely important for neurosurgery, um, probably as much as any other surgical specialty. 
Um, uh, and so uh, a premium is placed on that, that part of our early education. Neurosurgery residency is 84 months long, it's seven years. 54 months are dedicated to clinical neurosurgery and three months to basic clinical neuroscience. And each training program has a different uh, uh, setup for that, uh, that experience. And it's, uh, uh, it allows uh, some flexibility in terms of uh, how the training programs are set up. During your residency, in fact, before your last year of residency, in fact, before your chief residency year, which may not be your last year of residency, may actually be your PGY six year, you've got to pass the primary examination. And this uh, harkens back to that business about what your USMLE score is. We know that there are some of us are terrible test takers, but we're smart and we're good doctors. We know some of us are really good test takers. If you don't pass that primary exam during your residency, you cannot take your, your chief residency year. That means uh, you don't become a neurosurgeon, and that means you don't have a job. So we got to pass that test. Uh, finally, once that's done, you can complete your chief residency year. Everyone has to have a chief residency year during which you have some autonomy in terms of your own activities and the people under you. Following that, you have to have a two-sentence letter in your file that says that you are capable and competent to practice neurosurgery and then you can go get a job. However, you're not bored. Two minute warning. Are you done? Am I done? No, two minute warning. <laughs> got it. I think we're going to do it. Then you got to pass the oral examination within five years of your training. And that uh, is uh, a uh, uh, somewhat daunting of an experience, but um, uh, it's something that uh, has, has to be uh, accomplished. <clears throat> Uh, and by about 50 to 60 percent of neurosurgery graduates will then take uh, some sort of extra specialty training. You'd think seven years would be long enough, but uh, oh well. Um, many of the um, subspecialty uh, fellowships uh, will need to be taken at other institutions, and there's a nice, uh, there's an organization that will help you do that. The other organization that will rule your life is the ACGME, which is encompasses the Neurosurgical Residency Review Committee. Uh, this is the, the organization that uh, accredits all the neurosurgery training programs. This is a, a spectacular organization. I was chairman of this, uh, and uh, I'm proud to say that all those 112 neurosurgical training programs uh, uh, reach very high standards. Well, that's what your organizations bring to you. What do you need? What do you bring? Well, you've got to have an aptitude for this. Uh, it's neurosurgery is a unique um, um, uh, conglomeration of skill sets, including fine motor skills, but most importantly, a resistance to fatigue. It's a very difficult residency. The RRC only allows one residency to uh, go over the 80 hour work week, and that's neurosurgery. It is a unique lifestyle. It, was one that did not attract many women in the past, and now it is. Um, I don't think it's because the lifestyle change. I think it's because uh, more women have, are able to see themselves as successful in this. It's really important to have a role model. and maybe, In fact, it's important to have many role models to uh, be successful in this regard. So congratulations on all your accomplishments to date and enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks very much. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.